Shady Shore, the home of Edward Austin Sheldon, the founding father of SUNY Oswego, who built the frame of this family home in the 1850s. Perhaps he never envisioned what would grow around the roots he planted more than 150 years ago. Since that time, the campus has grown into an impressive state-of-the-art college on 690 beautiful acres bordering Lake Ontario. But it certainly didn't start out that way. In fact, if we turn the clock back to 1861, the Oswego Primary Teachers Training School, the forerunner of SUNY Oswego, was located in the city. However, Sheldon did use his Shady Shore residence to host student events. Through the early years, summer school was held in tents right on the lake shore. In 1909, the Oswego Normal School had outgrown its downtown location on West Schuyler Street. And after much negotiating with the state legislature, Oswego's second principal, Isaac Poucher, acquired the funding necessary to construct a new building on 27 and a half acres. The new land just happened to include the Shady Shore property. The new building became known as the Normal School Building. Accented by huge Corinthian columns on the outside, the interior included a library, an auditorium, and plenty of classroom space. When Principal Poucher opened its doors to the student body in September of 1913, it ushered in a new era for Oswego and American education. It would be 20 years before a second building joined the normal school. The new Industrial Arts Building had the honor of having Governor Franklin Delano Roosevelt lay its cornerstone in 1930. Over the years, Oswego's reputation as a leading school in the industrial arts would blossom. Today, the building is Park Hall, named in memory of Professor Joseph C. Park, housing the latest in technology. The post-World War II era was a time of great change for Oswego. Soldiers returning from the war took advantage of the GI Bill, and the college added temporary housing to accommodate the new students. In 1948, Oswego State Teachers College became one of the founding members of the new SUNY system. Soon, the campus began to expand. The first permanent dormitory would welcome nearly 300 students in 1951. The two wings were called Lonis Hall, named for alumnus and state legislator Ernest J. Lonis, and Moreland Hall, which was dedicated to popular faculty member James E. Moreland. Between the two residence halls, the first Hewitt Student Union created a place for students to meet and relax. Today, students recognize this building as the Mackin Complex. In 1958, two more buildings opened, a new residence called Johnson Hall and Lee Hall, a physical education building named in honor of Mary V. Lee, a professor of physical culture during the early years of the school. In 1959, the campus welcomed Lakeside Dining Hall, hailed as one of the most distinctive dining facilities in the nation. With its scenic setting, Lakeside was the perfect location for 500 students to enjoy a meal while taking in the panoramic views of Lake Ontario and its beautiful sunsets. The 1960s was a decade of great change, not only for the country, but also for SUNY Oswego, as 29 new buildings were added to the campus. Among them was the school's first separate library. Built in 1961, very close to Shady Shore, Penfield Library honored the memory of former English department chair and local historian, Lida S. Penfield. Later, the books would be relocated and the building would be renamed Rich Hall, which today is home to the School of Business. Golden Romney Fieldhouse on the South Athletic Field was originally a military drill hall from Sampson Air Force Base. But when it opened, it began a tradition of exceptional Laker hockey that continues today. 
By the mid-60s, a new campus school, named after acting president Ralph W. Swetman, opened, as well as Poucher Hall, where lecture halls for science and education extended the western end of the campus. New low-rise dorms along the shore of the lake gave students a true taste of Oswego weather. The population of the school increased dramatically. The onset of the baby boom generation created a new urgency for expansion. By the late 1960s, a new academic plaza would be constructed, featuring an expanded fine arts center, Tyler Hall, Mahar Hall, the new Hewitt Union, and Lanigan Hall. Finally, Culkin Hall, which became the new administrative building, created a formal entrance for the school. The Mary Walker Health Center, named after the first woman to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor, was built to serve the medical needs of the ever-growing and diverse student population. Expansion of West Campus continued as the surge of students looking for affordable quality education swelled enrollment to more than 7,000 students. This led to the development of Cayuga, Oneida, Onondaga, and Seneca, four new dormitories honoring both the Iroquois Confederacy and the author of Leather Stocking Tales, James Fenimore Cooper. They were joined by Little Page and Pathfinder Dining Halls. Despite all the growth that occurred, many alumni would argue that the most important gesture of all was renaming the very first building on campus from Old Main to Sheldon Hall in commemoration of the school's 100th anniversary. The campus remained virtually unchanged through the tough budget years of the 1970s and 80s. As a result, many of the existing buildings found themselves in need of repair and upgrade. But in the mid-1990s, construction started again, now in the form of renovation. Hart Hall became the first of many buildings to undergo a much-needed facelift. The campus entered a period of renewal under Oswego's 10th president, Deborah Stanley. Rich Hall was redeveloped to house the School of Business. And along the shoreline, a remodeled Johnson Hall, now home to the first year residential experience, reopened in fall 2002, bringing a more home-like look for living than the utilitarian dorms of another era. That same year, as part of a learner-centered design initiative, a groundbreaking ceremony took place for the college's campus center complex, the first all-new building in 30 years, encompassing over 111,000 square feet of space. During its construction, other projects were already underway, including the Lake Effect Cafe in the southeast corner of Penfield Library. Swetman Poucher Complex also underwent renovation, reopened with classrooms and offices for the humanities department and student services, as well as food and retail outlets. When the campus center officially opened its doors in 2007, it featured a magnificent arena to be used as both an ice hockey arena and convocation hall, along with a food court, a suite of meeting rooms, and student activity areas. But the story doesn't end there. Since the opening of the campus center, SUNY Oswego has added The Village, a new environmentally friendly townhouse residential complex for juniors and seniors just west of Glimmer Glass Lagoon. Looking into the future, the next campus expansion began with a groundbreaking ceremony for the new Science and Engineering Innovation Corridor in September 2010. When complete, the project will add more than 150,000 square feet to Pease Hall, which will undergo extensive renovation itself. The Oswego campus you see today is still a work in progress continuing to evolve and transform the educational experience with the same spirit of possibilities demonstrated by the school's founding father, Edward Austin Sheldon.